up guys, it's Mac, we're back. We did the quick trailer over to Big Ass Cop from Biking Lodge, as you saw there. I tried to film the trailer ride over. It's literally like less than a minute, super quick. And we're gonna go out today, chase some lights out. I got Emily with me today, step in the frame. Co-host Emily, we're gonna go out, try to catch some lights out. And most importantly today, we're gonna kinda talk about live soaps and my thoughts on them if you're looking at getting into them and some ways to kind of help take care of them when you do get them. So further ado, get out and catch some fish. All right, so as I mentioned, today we're going out for trout, and the goal today is to obviously catch some trout, but I want to talk about like the live scope and kind of do's and don'ts, and if you're looking at getting into it kind of deal. So obviously like the live scope, it's super, super sweet technology, but it's, it's pretty high tech stuff, and it's one of those things where you're gonna get out of it what you put into it. So if you put in the time to learn it, kind of dissect it and figure it out, like watch some videos on it, Videos like this and videos like that are obviously more into depth, like the settings and stuff. This video, I'm not going to be super into the settings and, and whatnot, because even myself, I'm not super uh, in tune with that. Like, I'm still learning as I go, right? But the more you can learn about it, the better of a tool it is for you, and the more confidence you're going to have in it. So right now, I'm basically just driving around, scanning. So even though like I'm using the live scope to look around, I still do always rely on my 2D for just kind of clarifying certain things. Like obviously like you can see the bait balls and stuff coming through. So I will rely on the 2D and the down imaging to just kind of clarify and just solidify my decision, whether it's fish or bait fish or whatnot. So that's one thing I definitely recommend is like as you are, are learning about the live scope and getting into it, still reference back to your 2D because as anglers, like we know what we're seeing on the 2D. So learning to translate that to the live scope is definitely really beneficial and it helps that learning curve. So right off the tip of this point, I'm seeing some bait fish and I'm seeing a few lake trout scattered in amongst the bait fish. So I'm probably gonna just pull up here a little bit onto the edge of the rocks and spot lock. And we'll sit, hunker down and see what happens. I'm gonna spot lock right here, right off the very tip of it. You can see it on the mapping. I just mapped this out today and we're gonna go right here, right off the tip of it. Got a few fish sliding through already, so that's promising. Anchor lock, off to the races. We're gonna start out jigging a couple different baits here. The bait Emily's gonna start out with here is just a jig head and a free loader. This has actually been one of my favorite baits this year. Super subtle, but gets the job done and seals the deal on a lot of fish. So I'll give that to you. Do you want me to get the live scope going at the front for you or no? And myself, I'm gonna start out with this. This is a Berkeley power bait, hollow body swim bait. And what I do is I just put a tube jig head inside of it. And I actually stuffed a little rattle in the tail there. You can hear that. A little rattle action. So we're gonna drop this down there, see what happens. The hollow body swim bait looks so good in the water. With that tube jig insert, it just allows it to dart out a little bit more and maintain such a good action on the fall. There's a fish up high somewhere. I see it on the 2D. Keep going. I think it's like right here. Right there. Oh, it's coming to you. Stuck him. First fish of the day. First bite and first hook set. That's it. You see it down there? Yep. Pretty cool in the clear water. Burping. That thing was up to like 30 feet. So that there, I actually saw that on the on the 2D before I even saw it on the live scope, just because like the live scope reads like this, right? It reads like a beam. And that fish was obviously off to the side. If I had the live scope turned, I would have seen it before I did on the 2D, but just the way that that fish came in. But I saw it on here like long before we even saw it on the live scope. Lots of bubbles. Burp shark. 
absolutely inhaled that through the art. Inhaled it. First fish of the day, of course, Emily got it. Oh, there's one up super high too. Oh man, we're brutal. Look at me. Those bait fish definitely just got chased down. Should have gotten pushed down to the bottom. See, that's so cool about the live scoping LC. Like there's a trout there just pushing that bait ball right down to the bottom. So cool to be able to see that. That's something where like on PD you can see, but you can't see like the directional movement. There's another one coming up super high on me. This is ideally what you want. You want fish constantly cycling through. Like we have lake trout cycling through and we have bait fish cycling through. Watch this lake trout here. It's gonna go chase them. Oh, there's another one up here pushing them down. Yeah, see that they're just chasing like that. Amazing how fast they are. That one's chasing pretty good. Yep. Stuck him. The freeloader. Awesome. Doesn't count. Didn't even see it. So I bumped this over a little bit shallower on the same piece of structure, but I just bumped this a bit shallower. So I noticed we were seeing a lot more fish coming from the shallows. So we're stationed up on top now. And we've been seeing a bit more fish up here since we've moved up here. We've got bait fish pushing through right now. And there was a few lake trout following them. All right, so we're gonna reel up. And we're gonna go check out some more water. The spot has kind of died off since this morning. Like I'd like to see a little bit more action. So we're gonna go find some greener pastures. So with the live scopes, there's lots of different ways you can rig them up and whatnot. Well, uh, like, like the best way I think is to have it on a pole. So you're able to kind of look around and visualize the water that you're, that you're fishing, right? So the system I have here is the Arc Lab system. I run the Arc Lab pole, Arc Lab shuttle. The, the reason I love it is just because it's so easy to stow and so easy to maneuver around on the water and it's super solid. It's all basically aluminum. So it's super solid, super rugged stuff. And you're able to drive with it in the water, look around. It's not a little plastic rinky dinky pole. And it stows just like that. So we're gonna head off, go find some fish. So like I said, we're moving on. We moved on from that hump that we started on there, that little point that I mapped out. There was some fish on it in the morning and then it kind of petered off. So now we're gonna look out a little bit deeper, more some main lake stuff, isolated structure. Lots of bait fish out here in a little bit deeper water. You can see there's piles in the bottom, piles up high. Right here, we're basically in between two humps. So you can see here, once this loads up, we got shallow water on both sides and piles of bait fish in the middle. So we're gonna focus on this. We're gonna set up here and see what happens. With all this bait, there's gonna be some lake trout moving through here shortly. We can only assume. Let's see what she's got. We got our first customer coming in. Now we'll reel up to that one up high, buddy, real quick. Stuck him. Stuck up. You see him yet? Yeah, he's right here. This one, about the same as they've kind of been getting all day. Got him. There we go. Put on a clinic. What? Four for me? Mm hmm. How many for you? Zero. Yeah, that one just, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Flew out of nowhere down on Smokey. Took that side was going down. They definitely keyed in on the minnow bait. Yeah. Is it bigger than the last one or no? Yeah, feels like it anyway. Should be hooked from here too. Yeah, it should. Looks fat. 
There's all the bubbles coming up here now. Fantastic one. So cool to watch them fight like that. Mm -hmm. Got a nice fish sliding at like 60 feet here. Probably sliding off one of the humps. Like I said, we're, we're surrounded by a couple humps here. In a little trough. There we go, this one's shooting at me. There we go. Mine's bigger though. Even when I do finally catch them, I barely hook it. Got a couple lake trout there. It's a little while to get them, but getting some lake trout now. So another cool little modification that I've done to my live scope since I've been, I've been running live scope for maybe about two or three years now. And something I've noticed is that the cables are very fragile and you gotta be very, very careful with them because fishing with them in the open water, obviously fish bite and they go crazy. And sometimes if that line touches the cord, it can actually cut right into the cable. So what I've done here is I've ran a rod sock, just a normal rod sock. I just cut the ends off it and I just run it over top of the cable all the way right down to the transducer. And what that does is it protects that cord from braided line. Cause lots of times, like I said, when braided line is tight, it is so sharp. And I've seen it before where braided line will cut right into these cords. It won't cut through the wires, but it'll cut right, th right through all the rubber and get right to the, to the bare copper wires. So it's important to protect them. Like uh, live scopes obviously aren't a cheap investment. So in my opinion, you should do what you can to, pr to try to protect them. So I run some sort of cable guard, I think is definitely a must have. Another thing you can do too is down low, you can get cable protectors that actually protect the cable on the deucer to keep it from bending and flexing. I'd recommend doing that too, especially if you're in the winter because stuff gets stiff in the cold, obviously. But if you can run some sort of protective casing or whatnot on your cord to at least protect it in the water for fish that are fighting around and can definitely cause some havoc. Another one. Cool. Since those fish are so keyed in on uh, minnow profiles right now, I'm gonna put down this little Z-Man jerk shad. Not really too little, I think it's a seven inch, but see if they key in on this. So yeah, overall, I would say with live scope, I don't think it, I don't think it necessarily makes you catch more fish. I think it definitely helps you learn. I think it definitely helps you stay entertained. I think it makes the fishing experience better but I don't necessarily think it makes you catch more fish. Seems like you just have a better insight of what's going on. Yeah, like what's going on under there. I agree. I think it gives you a better understanding of what's going on. But I don't necessarily think it'll always make you catch more fish. Sometimes it definitely will. You know, like seeing fish like 50 feet out from the boat that are 10 feet down, you're not going to see on a 2D sonar. But it doesn't it doesn't make them bite. Still fishing. Mm -hmm. It is still fishing. But yeah, I definitely noticed like like I said, having one in the boat last year, I noticed the clients that were focusing on the screen definitely seemed to have a better experience than the people that were uh, like up at the front of the boat that weren't as focused on the screen. So I actually got another screen just to provide that opportunity for everyone in the boat to be to be honed in and focused in on the screens. And both my screens are both set up on Arc Lab shuttles. The Arc Lab shuttles, I think they're the best. I, like I would argue that they're the best system for these live scopes between the poles and just the the heavy duty shuttle running clean power and the quick dock system I have them on here is just it's just so good to be able to take them off put them in the in the house to charge them put them in the ice shack whatever you know like they're so awesome being able to clip them on secure and be able to move them wherever you need to like what I usually do with clients is I just unclip them move them around to wherever I need to have them in the boat for people to be comfortable oh man that one flew up these ones are like right up at the surface yeah. here.
see if this one on the bottom comes up to my lead there if it comes down. Yeah, try. Oh, dumped it. That one was way down low on the bottom. We went from literally sight fishing them in like five feet on the surface to biting 90 feet down on the bottom. That's the amazing thing about lake trout. And why it's important to work the column, right? Yep. Just a little gaffer. Just a burping away. There you go, bro. You're good. There you go. There we go. Stuck them. But we're definitely catching a lot more fish here. Yeah. That's another thing I noticed. This is kind of just not really a, it's just more of a fact, but I definitely noticed since I started running live stuff on my boat, the loons absolutely love them for some reason. And they'll literally just come and swim around the boat like all day. I don't know if they're just hearing the frequency or what, but like this loon that's been swimming around this year for like an hour or so now. And yeah. they, they, like they constantly go down, just listen, it seems like, and then they just pop back up. I don't know, I've been, I've been experiencing this ever since I put them on my boat, but before that, I never had them doing this. But you can see like right now, he's just swimming, going down underneath the boat, and it'll pop up over on the other side. They just do this, I don't know why. I don't know if it's specific to the LVS 62, because that's what I'm running, or if it's just all live scope, but I definitely know it's a loon glove. I'll have a link down below to the Arc Lab website where you can purchase any of the stuff I'm using here today. Hopefully some of the tips and opinions on the live scope have been beneficial. We're gonna go cast the pike in a bay here right away and hopefully film another video. Site fishing for a giant pike. It's all things come together. We'll see you guys on the next adventure.